Hi everyone, thank you for coming to this uh, talk. So today I'm going to talk about dual alchemy, uh, which is an extension to SQL alchemy for working with uh, geospatial databases. Uh, actually, I'm going to talk about three, three things. Uh, I'm going to talk about geospatial databases in general, and then focusing on PostGIS. Uh, I will talk about SQL alchemy, which is uh, a Python SQL toolkit, and then I will talk about GeoAlchemy more specifically, uh, which makes it possible to use SQL Alchemy with uh, geospatial databases. So my name is Eric. Uh, I work for Auslandia, uh, and I've been using Postgres, PostGIS, Python, and SQL Alchemy for about 10 years now, so it's quite, quite a long time. So you have information about me here if you want to, to reach me after this talk. So Auslandia is my, my, my company. It's an open source company working on three different things. GIS system. So GIS means geographical information <coughs> system. So QGIS and PostGIS are examples of software components we are working on. And we, we are also working on 3D stuff. Um, mostly uh, web-related, and also data science. Uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Raphael, is going to do a presentation this afternoon on, on the dat data science part uh, and, and, and the work he's doing on, on that topic. <coughs> so, spatial database. So, what is a spatial database? Uh, quoting Wikipedia, it, a spatial database, or a geodatabase, or a geospatial database, uh, is a database that is optimized to store and query data that represent objects defined in a geometric space. So I think this is a good um, definition, maybe a bit complex, but to make it simple, I'm going to give you a few examples of spatial queries. So if, if I have a geospatial database, I can do speci spatial queries. Uh, this is one, uh, one example, like give me all the POIs, the point of interest, within a given area. So I have a polygon uh, which represents an area, and I want to know all the POIs that are within this, this area. Very simple query, but very typical, and we see this a lot. Uh, another one, which is very kind of similar, is give me all the POIs that are within a certain distance to a point. So instead of, of filtering by a polygon here, we filter by like a circle around a given point. So what do you do with uh, geospatial databases? So ultimately what you do is create beautiful maps. Um, that's one of the main um, goals of geospatial databases. And this, this one map is actually quite nice, I think. It's a map of Europe that is drawn only by its rivers and streams. Only that. And we get a beautiful map of Europe. So I've provided an introduction to spatial databases. And there is one famous one, uh, which is open source, completely open source, and which is PostGIS. And PostGIS is actually not a database system in its own. It's an extension to Postgres. So as you <coughs> may know, Postgres is very flexible. You can write extensions in many language, languages, and, and PostGIS is one of them. It's implemented in, in C, and yeah, extension to, to Postgres. So what does it provide? It provides uh, special types, like geometry type, geography type, raster type as well. And it also provides functions, uh, SQL functions, that you can use to manipulate your uh, geometric uh, data, geographic data. It also has operators uh, that you can use and also indexes. So the geographic data is indexed uh, the same way as other data types are indexed uh, to, to speed up queries. 
So now I'm going to go through a number of examples just to show you what it is and how you can actually use uh, PostGIS, very simple examples. So example number one, um, let's say you have a database, Postgres database, regular database. Now you want to enable PostGIS in this database to be able to use the geometry types, the functions, etc. So what you do, very simple, you do create extension PostGIS in your database and then PostGIS is enabled. So now you have enabled PostGIS, what do you do? So you can create a table, just the way you do it, as usual. Uh, so here it's a users table with an ID, a name, a full name, and then there is a geometry column in addition to the typical columns. So the geometry column here, um, it's a geometry and you specify that it's, a, it's point, points that you're going to, to insert in, in this table. So this, this point here is, is kind of um, constrained, so you, you enforce that only points will be, will be inserted in, in that column. And after the table creation here, there is an index creation for this uh, geometry column. And it's a, it's a gist index for those of you who know about that. So OK, I have a table. I can start uh, inserting some data in my table. So here I insert a user, just one user, Paul Ramsey, which is one of the authors of PostGIS, by the way. And I associate a point uh, to, to this user. So the point here is minus 123.48. And here you can see that I use this PostGIS function here, which can create an actual geometry from a text, uh, which is a textual representation of the geometry I, I want to insert. So each time you, s you see st underscore here, it's a PostGIS function. So now I have uh, some data in my database and I want to do the same kind of query I, I, I explained before. So here I want to get all the users in this table that are within a distance to a given point. And this is my point, oh, I have a typo here. Minus sign is missing. Uh, so I can do a very simple query, select all the name of the users where this condition is, is respected. So here, again, I use a PostGIS function, which is the std within function to get all the users that are within this circle. OK, as another example, I don't know if some of you knows, um, some of you know OSM, OpenStreetMap. Uh, so this is an OpenStreetMap map. And actually, OpenStreetMap is a um, is a user of PostGIS. Uh, here, what you see is an image created from the, the OpenStreetMap database. And this typically uses <coughs> PostGIS for storing the data and also Mapnik for doing the, the rendering. OK, so I've introduced uh, geospatial databases and then focused on on PostGIS. Um, now I'm going to talk about a completely different thing, um, SQL Alchemy, uh, which is the very famous, very well-known database toolkit for, for Python. So a bit about the philosophy of, of the toolkit. Um, I think it's very different from some other uh, ORM that we, that we find. Um, on the, op on the open source uh, world. Uh, so this one is not about hiding the database. Um, it's not trying to hide or to abstract th the database too much. Uh, for example, the relational form of the data is preserved. So if you want to use SQL al Alchemy, SQL Alchemy very efficiently, you have to understand how your data is formed underneath and you have to know SQL. Otherwise, you won't, be, you won't be efficient. So SQL Alchemy just provides you uh, constructs and expressions uh, to be able to implement uh, what you want. 
So you have to make your decisions. So this is the architecture of SQL Alchemy. So you have the core, which is the main uh, stuff. This is the low level layer. Uh, this is where you find all the schemas, type, definition, and very importantly, the SQL expression language, which is the language you use to, to, do, to make your queries. Uh, also, all the components to be able to interact with the database, so engine, connection, connection pooling as well, etc. And it can work with different database systems, includ including Postgres, MySQL, and many others. And on top of that, you have the ORM layer, uh, which is totally optional. If you don't want to use the ORM and stick to the SQL expression language, you, you, can, you can do it. And it, it's even very much encouraged uh, to not use the ORM depending on your use cases. So again, a few examples on how to use SQL Alchemy. So example number one, how to define and create tables. So let's say you want to, in your <coughs> Python code, you want to define and create tables. Here I create two tables, a users table with a column, ID, name, full name, same tables as before, and an addition tables here, addresses with an ID, a user ID column, which is a foreign key to the table, to the users table, and, and an email address column. So you do your definition like this in Python, and then you, call, you can call create all, and this will issue the SQL uh, queries for, um, for creating those tables in your, in your database. So another example showing how to insert uh, data. So here I have my users. So users here is actually the table I just created, table object I just created. So I can use that table object and I call insert. So I get an insert expression. And then I can call values on this expression to, to give some values to be, to be inserted. Then I, I use the engine, call create to get a connection, and then I can execute my, my insert query. Selection example now. Um, so this is how you do a selection. So you have a select function that you can use to create a select object. So here I, I create a select object using users, two table users and addresses. And then I use a where condition, where filter to actually specify the join, join condition between the two tables. So very, very, very close to what you see in, in SQL. So now I want to step back a bit and, and, and see if you, don't use, uh, if you don't use SQL Alchemy, then you use the DB API uh, module underneath uh, directly. So here, for example, with, uh, with Postgres, you would use Psycho PG2, uh, which is a DB API implementation. And when you use Psycho PG2 and you don't use SQL Alchemy, you need to write strings. You need to write SQL strings to define your queries. So this would look like this. So you define your, your query, your basic base query, and then if you need to add some filter, you, you would do string manipulation, string concatenation to be able to add your filters. And you also need to populate those vars that you will pass to the, to the cursor execute function. So if you have a limit, for example, you need to, again, do some concatenation, not forgetting about the space, etc. Here, otherwise it won't work. So, yes. <coughs> okay. And with SQL Alchemy, it's it's, uh, it's more straightforward. Um, it's uh, you you don't manipulate strings, so it's it's much easier, and you you can you can provide code which is much better, uh, easier to debug, easier to to understand. So when you, when you have a large code base, this can be very beneficial. And also one of the advantages of SQL Alchemy is, is its ecosystem. Uh, it has 
uh, many, many components around it. So Alambic, for example, uh, is a database migration system, which is very, very popular. And there is Flask SQL, SQL Alchemy, which is an extension for SQL Alchemy, and many others. So OK, so now I'm going to talk about GeoAlchemy, uh, which it provides extension to SQL Alchemy for working with special databases. So you have special databases. And, and SQL Alchemy and GeoAlchemy is just a, a, a layer on top of it to be able to, to use special databases. So a bit of history. Um, it's actually quite old project. It was created in 2009, and it was PostGIS only at that time. And then we added more uh, dialects uh, support, MySQL, SpatialLite, etc. And at that time, SQL Alchemy was not very flexible, and GeoAlchemy 1 was like quite thick, and in two, 2012 we decided to rewrite it completely because SQL Alchemy was different, was much more flex flexible, so GeoAlchemy 2 is, is a much thinner layer on top of SQL Alchemy. And recently we added support to SpatialLite, so it supports both PostGIS and SpatialLite special databases. So GeoAlchemy features, it supports geometry, geography, raster types, so all the types that are supported by PostGIS. Uh, it supports <laughs> many, if not all, uh, PostGIS functions, operators. Uh, it works with SQL Alchemy Core and SQL Alchemy ORM, and it integrates with uh, uh, other libraries very well. So again, same kind of examples as before. Uh, I have my users table, and then I can add another column, which is the geometry column, uh, getting this type from GeoAlchemy. I can do some inser insertion. So this time, I insert a user with a geometry, which I specify through its uh, textual representation and do the usual stuff for, for insertion. And this is how queries look like. Uh, so here I can do a selection on the user's table uh, with uh, this filter. And again, I use the std within postgis function uh, within my SQL Alchemy query. Same as before. Another example with a polygon. So this time, instead of using std within, I use the stContains function in the where clause to be able to get all the users that are within this, this polygon here and print the result. So yeah, I, as I said, uh, GeoAlchemy integrates well with uh, other libraries, uh, Python libraries uh, that we find in the geospatial world, like Shapely, very popular uh, geometry library, uh, Geos, Geo, sorry, GeoJSON for producing GeoJSON outputs, and PyProj for changing, for reprojecting your data. So in conclusion, um, I think PostGIS is great if you have some data uh, that are uh, localized. So if you have points or polygons or lines and you want to store that and, 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 and exploit this data, PostGIS is a wonderful tool and I would recommend it. Uh, SQL Alchemy is also great when working with uh, databases in Python. Instead of manipulating <laughs> strings, and can be very beneficial, especially when your code base grows. Very, very good tool. And GeoAlchemy is just the tool, just a thin layer uh, on top of SQL Alchemy that you can use to make your life easier when using PostGIS or other um, or Special Light, for example. Thank you very much. Do we have time?